We are at our Back Bay project and a lot has happened. I'm here with Tim, our site super. Through the last few months, we have filmed a handful of times here and we have been forever framing. Yeah. There was so much work that we had to do to get to this point. And mechanicals were super complicated, electrical. A lot of what we were dealing with was you know, building, building wide, but then just in the unit itself. But we're also setting the stage for a really high caliber amount of work, especially when it came to our plaster, which we're looking at. Before we talk about that, I want to just kind of remind people, when you were ready to, to plaster, we 3D scanned this place. Yep. Why is that important to you, and how do you think that we'll use that in the future? I mean, it's a luxury I don't think a lot of people take advantage of. Um, but you can always go back, measure anything, see what's there. Just today, you know, we had a random wire coming out of the wall, went to the scan, looked at it, saw what it was, pulled down one piece of blue board in the basement, freed up the wire. Right. Rather than cutting things, wondering what I'm getting into. Even, I mean, we've used it a few times in just the month and a half since we've done the scan. We use MultiVista to scan this entire space uh, and actually scans it in laser and it gives us real dimensions. So we can actually pull dimensions right on screen within the app. And that's something we're gonna be implementing on all of our projects, not only just for what Tim's talking about, for, but for future. Uh, I was actually visiting a friend of mine, Matt, you guys might know him down in Austin, Texas, and his team, I was walking one of his finished projects and one of his team members was in this home, completed, and they were installing this floating shelf on the wall uh, and they were able to pull up the scan and they, they were talking about how nervous they were in installing this floating shelf because the wall that they wanted that on was completely filled with mechanicals, water lines, and so on and so forth. And they were able to drill through, which was was actually a, a finished oak wall, right into a stud to make sure that they could mount it. So it's even things like that. Um, I actually didn't share that with you, but it was, it was pretty insane to see just, I mean, this is very expensive room and here they are drilling into a wall knowing that they're gonna hit that stud uh, because they can, uh, they can hit to, to that accuracy. Now, I don't know what they use to scan it, but that's really why we end up with a scan that is not only getting us the, the visual, but actually the, the documentation because it's, because it's laser scanned. Yeah, and the numbers aren't fake. We've scaled it, you know, just to try it out. I mean, it's right on. Yeah. It's right on. And they do, it seems like a shot every six, six or eight feet. Sure. So no matter where you go, you can always square up to where you want to measure or where you want to look or the crevice you're trying to look into. Yeah. It's Makes impressive. Great. Now we're into blue board. I'm not gonna address the question as to why we blue board and plaster because everyone else in the country doesn't, but that's what we do here in, in Massachusetts. Now, traditionally, it's a blue board, which is a gypsum board, and then a scratch coat usually over the seams and the, 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 the screw heads, and then they trowel with, you know, say a 14 inch trowel over the entire surface. And it get, gets you a pretty flat product, a really nice veneer product. But we're doing something a step above that and working with uh, Trowel Inc, Colby and his team. And a lot of this is true two coat and it's also straight edged, meaning they're using long pieces of aluminum to true up, you know, an entire wall. This is kitchen, living room, areas where we have fixed dimensions for cabinetry. So this kitchen ceiling, this living room ceiling and these walls catch light in, in such a way that this is going to be the highest end of finish we're gonna do in the unit. Tim made a great point, the fixed dimensions for cabinetry. Now, yes, everything has a, a scribe to it, but our intent is to build to a finished dimension. Yeah. That way we're not waiting to this point to start fabrication. We can design, fabricate, and, and use what we call hold to dimensions. Yep, so as you described, you know, this whole entire ceiling gets a skim and straightened and with the lights, these lights are trimless. Trimless, yep. So they do have a mud ring that goes around it that kind of sticks off the blue board, say an eighth of an inch. And they'll set those with a laser and get everything on the same plane the way they like it. And they use those as control points along with their perimeter where they actually snap lines and straight to also. Now, so it really comes out flat. So if you look over there, you can actually see the mud ring. You're setting that for height, but this right here now, this looks like a, a, an initial scratch coat. Yeah, he calls it a ground. So they start with this so they can actually snap to something. So it does form the bond between the ceiling and the wall, but they use it as a nice white surface so they can snap a level line on. Right. And then if they needed to, um, they would actually bring that down, you know, say like a six inch knife and they'd bring it down a quarter of an inch or whatever needed to happen. And that's their other fixed point other than the trims is also their ground. Right. So that trim they're going to set basically at, you know, the highest point they can and set everything else with that laser. And then that laser is going to come across and hit your wall. And then that's going to tell you how much you have to build that portion of the ceiling down. Exactly. 
and like you said, they're using that six inch knife, giving you that, that line to hit that, that laser. But then they're able to use that straight edge and use this to ride, because that, that's gonna dry overnight. Yeah. And they're gonna come in and plaster this and they're gonna scree basically across that light. And when that light gets mudded and that corner gets mudded, they know they're at the same elevation. Yeah. As we flip back around here, we only have one wall done, one wall done, you know, one wall there, not, and none of them being connected. What, yeah. What's the importance of that? So it's a little bit of a sequence game between where like the metal corner bead that you see here mm -hmm. and also the corner bead that's on this ceiling. So what, you know, Kobe likes to do is not run the grounds behind any of the mud. So this ceiling was done before this corner bead would go in. So it's not in the ceiling plaster. He's found that that's where the cracks would begin. Mm -hmm. You know, the expansion and contraction, different materials, ceiling height, wall temperature, just avoid it altogether and do the ceiling then run your bead to that. And that's the same sequence with like this bead here. That's why they did this ceiling today and this wall last week. So this wall is dry, then the bead goes to the wall. It seems like a lot of steps, but it's really just based around quality and maintaining that quality over time. I think that's an important po point in thinking about why you know, that corner bead shouldn't be buried in the wall and, and then doing kind of surfaces one at a time. They basically wanted to get their first surface create a nice crisp line yep and then when they do this one they can plaster to that line and then when that's when that's done when you cut that piece of baseboard you know that that angle say it's 22 and a half degrees is 22 and a half degrees all the way up yep you're not you're not messing with it now what's the importance of that tim just alluded to it it's about quality and quality being our number one focus here and on every job is that we have the ability to do a very high quality job and then when you look at that line it's straight because yeah. oftentimes you know that these two walls are done at the same time and then you're trying to get that straight line you don't have that that ability to kind of use one surface as a guide because they're both wet at the yeah. same time yeah i feel like same amount of work if you went about it the wrong way sure then doing what kobe's doing you know it just really kicks up the quality and lets them actually work in a more accurate way Right. Now they can stand back and be like, yeah, this is how we should do this from now on. Sure. And not everything is, is a roadmap. You know, this is how you get here. Stuff that Kobe's figured out on his own. Sure. Um, now, and I, I, years I, I, of experience. So I caught him on his way out and I had asked him, I looked at that and I was like, oh, there, that wall must have had a slight dip to the top. That's exactly what we're looking at here, right? Yep. So when you have a dip that maybe, you know, I'm not sure how deep that is, say it's an eighth inch plus, but hey, that, that wall has a slight dip. Here's an opportunity, we'll, we'll fill it with some mud and then tomorrow we'll scratch coat it and then final coat. But that guarantees us that that surface is gonna be flat. Yep. And it's really going around and using those straight edges and levels to figure out like, all right, where do we have to build out yeah. and using those control lines. And maybe this stuff never really shows up from a client standpoint, but from an installation of cabinetry, flooring, as you mentioned, baseboard, trim, like that stuff is gonna to go together much easier for us just by the steps that Kobe's gonna to take to make sure that we're flat. And it's funny too, where it's like thinking about the next trade and, and how each trade affects one another. It, it all stems back to like good framing, good plaster, good trim, good paint, and one, thinking one trade after the other. Yeah. Uh, speaking of other trades, so we have an HVAC duct above us. Yeah. Why is that not plastered? Is that a traditional grill that with a flange? These ceiling supplies and, and returns will get the same mud flanger on those two, but they need to get smoke fire damper first. And that's on a little bit of a delay. So we're working with the plaster and he's willing to kind of skip them for now. Right. And I mean, they, they're not going to affect any of these heights. We'll blend into them later. Sure. But that has to be installed after the fire damper. So with the respect to like dealing with product delay, damper is product delayed, we need to get it in. We can't get it in after that grill goes on. So like Tim said, Colby, Colby, it's actually a pretty common detail, especially when you're doing speakers and things like that, but to leave that out. And then once that, that grill goes in, cause you're using a, like you said, a, a plastered in grill from architectural yeah, grills. Exactly architectural grills that'll get screwed and you'll have that mud flange and that mud flange will be basically set to match the plaster that's around it and then you can come through and kind of screed and blend it back into uh, the rest of that ceiling yeah. and once it's painted you'll never see no. uh, because that is something a lot of people ask do you paint the plaster in this case yes most m most of the time we are painting plaster it's just providing that harder eggshell like surface yeah. the last thing i want to talk about is the staircase the staircase is being fabricated off site You've been working with Bob for months now, working through a 3D design. Um, did I hear accurately in our 
OAC meeting that the stair is done? Basically. So, all right. So how is that staircase done and we're not plastered? We had a fabrication window from the start. So this job, you know, started as one thing and is, is stretched into another. Um, but with talking with Bob, he had a fabrication window kind of set for this job. Mm. And as long as we could get all the questions answered and give him real numbers and make all our selections, he wanted to stick to the same fabrication window, even if it meant holding, holding on to the staircase, you know, for a few months. Yeah. It was, he, he wanted to stick to that. So that's what we did. So when you say numbers, what he's talking about is these hold two dimensions. Right. And those hold two dimensions is, means that he fa he's designed this staircase in a model form, 3D model, and he's giving a, he has given us the, the, the dimension of this opening, this curved wall and everything. And in those dimensions, he's accounted for blue board, which is our JIP board, and then plaster on top of that. Yeah. Now, this is where it's hyper critical to be dead on. Yeah. So I, I overheard you and Colby talking about it, but what is the plan to plaster this wall and make sure we actually hit that hold two dimension? That's tricky, tricky thing to describe. Um, basically, we're gonna make a 10 foot tall screed on a pivot. So we'll, we'll find this curve, we'll come back the radius, and we'll build a jig that is on a pole that we'll make a swivel for, and the whole thing will turn so 180 degrees. Pole in the middle, Yeah. basically the, the radius of that wall, and like you said, you're just gonna have this huge screed that they'll essentially plaster that wall, get that plaster up on the wall, and then spin that thing around. And yeah. then just back and forth, back and forth, getting that scratch coat. And then they'll come through with that final coat and burnish that out with the hand trowel. Exactly, yeah. But this would just be for the base. Right, and yeah. giving you that whole two dimension. So when that staircase comes in, uh, it gets placed in place. Yeah. Placed in place. Perfect. Keep using the same word over and over. <laughs> um, with, with respect to the stair, how is that stair going to be put into place? Because when, when we were talking about it originally, I was like, man, how are they going to get that one piece down in, 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 in yeah, so it's not one piece we bounce back between two and three and I think we settled on two okay so the plan is is where we are right now we have this roof deck out back and then uh, you know street will access you know the back of a truck bring it in through this door it's the straightest shot and it's the most room in this place through the basement there's too many walls there's too many things to move around and mm -hmm. they're big pieces I mean yeah. you can definitely steer them between things sure but we'll just go up here and then it'll be dropped in Got it. So uh, two pieces, basically half of a J, half of a J. Mm -hmm. So up, up, upper and then split in, in that stair location, in that step location down there. I think we're coming around the curve. So I think one piece is, is bigger than the other. Oh, wow. I don't okay. think he wanted to break the curve Got with it. a joint. Got it. Um, so it'll come around. So that'll go in and then that, that's, and that's basically after plaster when we're in finish and then the final piece would be to bring Colby back and you need to plaster the bottom side of that staircase yep. to kind of tie everything together. Yep. Cool. Hopefully that answers a bunch of your questions around why we plaster, how we plaster, and also gives you a glimpse into how Colby and his team really approach plaster in a more artistic form. If you guys have questions, drop them below. We'll make sure we answer them. We'll get Colby on a future episode so we can dig into exactly his process.